All right, so here's part two of me filling in for Dave Harrigan producing the Dan Connery Show from way back on February 5th of 2009. Just as a quick reminder to you, I want you to check out danmcgrath.net where you can get a hold of a copy of one of my two new books, The Storm Tower or The Voter Fraud Manual, and some other good stuff, danmcgrath.net. But for now, here's Dan Connery. The planet has a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. It's 8-11. Welcome back. I am Dan Connery, coming to you live from the bunkers of the Minnesota Majority. Radio for Wright County, AM 1360, KRWC. Welcome. Good morning. Glad to have you along. And uh, as you heard the Goracle say, the uh, planet has a fever. And our quest to uh, go green has been uh, a passionate one, to say the least. And Minnesota leads the way in such thinking. Our moderate Republican governor is completely on board with the global warming scam and just willing to spend your money to uh, facilitate that. Here's an interesting story, Star Tribune. Roseville Library will go green certification. Go for a green certification. Do you have any idea what the hell that is? Not really, but I did hear about it and I heard it's expensive. Let me give you some of the details. Sometimes you need to spend some green to be officially green. <sighs> that was lame, but I kind of liked it at the same time. That's pretty much what the entire green movement is really Ex- about. Anyways. Absolutely. It's about the Benjamins. It, it is about to get in your pocket and uh, provide green jobs and uh, financing and funding and grants. and uh, uh, Are we that stupid? I mean, that just we've gotten to the point where I have to ask myself... When I hear good friends of mine say, well, you know, we need to find alternative energies. And University of Minnesota came out with uh, a report on ethanol. No better than regular gas, which means what? If it came out of the U, that means it's not as good as regular gas. That's what that report means. That's, that's for damn sure. And another scam. Who was that politician? She was running. <laughs> she didn't know what uh, ethanol was. Uh well, Mike Hatch is uh, running mate? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it was Hatch's running mate. Man, that was funny. I should know this because that was right when I was on the campaign trail yep. myself. Yep. Uh, the name escapes me at the moment, though. Man, it, and it, I felt bad for her. I was watching the uh, the news. She's like, uh, oh, geez, you put me on the spot. I, I don't know what the ethanol is. I do remember that, and we were making a lot of hay with it at the time. Oh, yeah. But, oh, yeah. Uh, it was a train wreck. I, I forget her name, but... Uh, it's too early in the morning for I, my brain to... You know what? I see that. the Red Bulls are flowing, my friend, so <laughs> you keep doing what you got to do. I appreciate it. Um, uh, the idea was behind the uh, a decision Tuesday by the Ramsey County Board to spend an additional $780,000 on the Roseville, Roseville Library expansion. The cost for the project is now about $18 million for an expansion on a library. $18 million. That's incredible. That is stunning. Now, Dan, you and I have both worked in the trades in, in, in small degrees, and uh, it was determined that I would never work in fine carpentry, and my boss was very kind enough to tell me that early on in the deal. And, Dan, you, we'll let you do studs and a little painting. Other than that, get away. Don't touch anything that looks nice. You don't need to be near that. Um, $18 million. And you can think about any commercial project that you ever worked on, you ever looked at, Ever, ever been a part of somebody's getting jacked here somebody's getting robbed here guess who it is the taxpayer 18 million dollars for an expansion uh, commission commission has voted five to two to seek certification under the leadership in energy and environmental design or lead lead is a certification is lead certification is a nationally recognized Third-party verification that the building project is environmentally, environmentally responsible and will create a healthy place to work. Or in my words, a fluffy place. We need a fluff. Is this fluffy? I want to be the snuggle bear. Was it Snuggles uh, fabric softener? Just a little blue bear flies into the, into the clothes. Oh, yeah. You've got to have some of those in every library. got to have uh, some fluffiness. Uh, as envisioned, the library project will include three environmental education exhibits. Ooh. In other words, we got to keep promoting this. we got to keep the brainwashing going. Indoctrination. Shh, shh, shh. You will be green. You will do as we say. 
Not enough people believe they got to get out the re-education programs, re-education camps. Stunning. Just uh, and, and and my good liberal friends, my my friends who would stand against uh, this government encroachment, this march to socialism. You will be called, hey comrade. You will be comrade now. It's good. To, uh, you will inform on the, your neighbor as well. If they're doing bad things, you'll tell the government. Yes. Let me continue this uh, train wreck. Uh, as envisioned, the library project will include three environmental education exhibits. The goal for the library, which draws about 2,000 visitors a day, is to be a public example of how to build an eco-friendly manner and share those principles. You know, I'm a big fan of not using lead paint. I kind of get that. I, I chopped on a few paint pits when I was a kid. It's probably a bad thing. But uh, when does this hijacking stop? When did this... Um, it, this is armed robbery, no matter how you slice it, uh, because you're under threat. Let's look at the definition of robbery. If you are under th- any threat of physical violence, and in a few, let's let's say you park in a neighborhood, oh, let's say like Highland Park in St. Paul, or let's say the Uptown in Minneapolis. My Bohemian friends, there, if you if you parked a car there. That said, I do not believe in global warming. This is a sham. And, Dan, you're affiliated with the, with a group uh, who's been trying to educate people on this. Uh, I, I do sometimes fear vandalism of my van for the bumper sticker that's on there, that's globalclimatescam.com. Globalclimatescam.com. I want you to go to that site, by the way, globalclimatescam.com. And that's exactly what I was going to ask you, Dan. That's exactly where I was going. Um, uh, there are neighborhoods where my friends, who, who were uh, uh, Bush Cheney supporters, had the stickers on the cars. Guess what? Windows broke. Windows broken. So if you park a vehicle anywhere near this library and say this is arm robbery, it's a scam, be afraid. Be very, very afraid. Your car will more than likely be vandalized. Uh, you'll be threatened. You'll be yelled at. So the armed robbery continues, my friends. And being that I'm a man who likes to think outside of the box every now and then, couldn't we call law enforcement? Can't we call some sort of government agency to, to repel this onslaught? The library will close for remodeling March 31st. Its materials will be put in storage or taken to a temporary location at 2680 Arthur Street near Rosedale Center. About 80% of the library's collection will be available at the temporary location, which opens May 2nd. Story times, computer classes, and Internet workstations will also be available. The expansion will add about 30,000 square feet and 100 parking spots and will triple the number of computer stations. About 300,000 of the budget will go toward technology improvements. Environmental education, about half of the additional 780,000 will help the county attain the rigorous LEED certification. What happens when you get the lead? What happens when you get the certification? Ooh. It's not just a parade. It's not just happy time with people clapping their hands. You know what happens when you probably get that lead certification? Uh, you become eligible for a visit from Al Gore. And not only that, not only that, my friends, you've won some federal money and you've won some state money. Ah. There you go. There you go. The robbery continues. Um, the environmental edu- education components are uh, rain gardens to <laughs> rain gardens to highlight how stormwater is cleaned. A recycling project that will use glass donated by a patron that will be ground up and used used in on a floor. I don't get that. A second floor roof partially made of glass to allow natural light to illuminate such. Much of the building and reduce heating costs. Then that's not a bad idea. That I get. If you could do something to, you know, to generate uh, self-contained heat and, and, and use solar energy in a project like that, I'm fine with that. That's okay. I could deal with that. If you want to give us a call this morning, it's one 775 7751 Now, I don't mean to depress you because this is the Dan Conrad Show and we're the hope. Uh, we are the hope show. We are the show for change and optimism. Real change. We just got to uh, defeat what's going on right now politically. One eight six six seven seven five seven seven five one. If you want to send us an email in studio, it's show at danconry dot com. This is Radio for Ride County, AM thirteen sixty KRWC. Here we are, grasping our guns and holding on to our religion. It's all we got. 
That's all we got left. You can keep the change. You can keep this change. That's for sure. one 775 7751 Uh There are two voices of reason uh, with the um, uh, commissioners of the Ramsey County Board. Commissioners Jim McDonough and Janice Rettman voted against spending the additional money on the Green Library Project. Um, McDonough said that uh, two million worth of cuts has already been made to lower the project's cost and that spending $380,000 for a certificate wasn't prudent considering the original design would meet basic lead standards. Commissioner Rafael Ortega disagreed. It's not about a piece of paper, it's about a process, he said. Uh, this is a means to an end for uh, Mr. Ortega, which is federal money, state money, grants, free money, whatever you want to call it. It's taxpayers' money. That, that's what his motive is. I am, uh, again, we are the show of hope. We are the show of change. Do not be frightened. We will get you through this. Because when I get emails like this to help us understand why such projects uh, like this are underway, it just tells you the genius of the uh, listener of the Dan Connery show. Email from Jim in North St. Paul. Hey, Dan, don't forget the sweet plaque they get from recycled tin cans and at the library we're able to display it in, uh, on the front door. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Have at it. That makes me want to renew my library card. I want to run out. Right. I, when's the last time you've been to a library? Uh, probably 20 years ago. Yeah. Same for me. Um, when I'm down at my mom's house, uh, she's in, um, on, on the east coast of Florida. She likes to uh, go to the library because it, it's really nice, little library in scope of what it should be in that area. Um, several uh, computer stations. Uh, mom does not want computers in the house anymore. She's done with them. She worked on Wall Street. She she could care less about the internet and just. just but when, when she needs to get things done, she'll she'll pop over to the library. Um, I can honestly tell you, probably the same for me until I got in uh, my present relationship, the 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 gal who I'm going to marry, and her wonderful son. Uh, we, there are some great resources for a kid at a library. Need, want them to know how to use a library. Want them to know how to look up and look for a book when you're at the... But now there's computer screens. You, you, I used to love those long drawers with all the cards in them. And you just, Dewey Decimal System. The Dewey Decimal System. Thank you. And uh, But now you just type in the uh, title, and there it is for you. Just, it's it's kind of... It's dumbing us down, I think, to a degree. Uh, we no longer know the process to get to... Um, it's the way I look at math now. Uh, there is a procedure. There's a, uh, there's a logical, step-by-step, incremental procedure to get you to a logical solution. Nobody is worse at math than me. I detest math. Always hated math, always will. So I'm, I'm the American who said, well, I am the big, fat, lazy, dumb, stupid American. Thank God for a calculator. I admit that. But I'm also uh, the, the guy who, if I'm making change or if I'm giving... a uh, somebody at the cash register, I said, listen, I'll give you this dime. This way you can round it off. You can just, here, I, I got the dime. That completely confuses a lot of cashiers. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> just lose their minds, man. Watching people try to figure out change if they punch in the wrong number on the register or something, of, oh, you'll be there for half an end hour. End of the game. That's the end of the game. No, no I will not be destroyed. Help. Help. Danger. Danger. Uh, just people lose their minds now today. And I, and wh- I've, I've got a little hobby now. I know the change that I'm supposed to get back. And when the drawer pops open, what do, where do I look? I look right in their eyes. Because more times than not, they have to look at the screen to see what the change is. Oh, they absolutely, have to. yes. Um, do I blame them for that? No, it's right there in front of them. And then it, 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 in their mind, it verifies, yep, that, that, that that's what the change should be. But they can't. Uh, it's bad. I I went into a store, a coffee store, one day where the registers were down. And I was like, "Whoa, cool! Let's see what happens." There were two women behind the counter. Both of them had gray hair. They were like two machines, baby. They were making chains, getting it no problem at all. And and there were two uh, girls coming in who were going to replace them for a change of shift. Lose it! Oh my God! What are we going to do? We're going to do what we're doing right now. We've been making change all morning. We're doing fine. Everything's fine. No, no, this is this is bad. This is very bad. All right, God speaking, good luck to you. You loser. 
I uh, once popped into a fast food restaurant, and their registers were down, so they just simply wouldn't sell me anything. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, and you know what? I've seen that. I've absolutely... Blew I'm me so, away. Sorry, everybody. Everything is down. And uh, it was it was a fast food joint. And I'm standing I says, wait a minute. There's food over there. There is money in that register. There is a brain in your skull, I, I think. You know, I, I, I was being presumptuous. I know. There was a brain in your skull. Why are we not getting... There were people... Had to be 20, 30 people standing at the counter. All right, let's go. Sorry, everybody. The registers are down. <laughs> <laughs> He's making that announcement. Subtraction is impossible without the <laughs> register. <laughs> Obama is not elected yet. We cannot get you this food. There's hope. There is hope you will get this food. He's got to get elected, and we can get some money, and we can give you the food. Of course, you do have to do a little multiplication, too, with the sales tax and everything. Yes. I could see how that could get just too overwhelming. Well, for me, it probably would get a little low. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. But uh, the fact is... A good boss would just, all right, let's get it done. we got to get it done. Let's Get out some pencils and paper and uh, write down what you sold so you can keep track of your inventory. Maybe if you need it, get out the calculator and yeah. do the tax. And, it's not uh, that complicated. All right, me, personally, if I was, I'm was, i a good boss, I'm just going to jack the price up a little bit. <laughs> so we Round got everything. everything up yeah. to the nearest $10. <laughs> yeah, jack it up. All right, yeah, that'll be eight fifty. Thanks. Have a nice day. one 866 So, uh... Thank God for the voices of reason uh, on the uh, the board of commissioners at Ramsey County, but regrettably that money is going to be spent. Uh, my condolences to the good citizens of uh, Ramsey County. Uh, I feel your pain. I understand you. Um, they're willing to spend another seven hundred and eighty thousand dollars, but we, as consumers, we have been rescued by the government once again. We have been saved by the government once again. The Obama administration is here for you. They will save you every time. Thank heavens. I was going to, no, I can't say, I can't do that. Remember the uh, French guy who was saying, thank heavens for little girls? Uh, it's an old song. It's an old song. Sorry. Yeah, and it's way before my time. I shouldn't know it. But um, do you have uh, you have satellite or cable, Dan, at home? Cable. All right. So you have your cool boxes at home. They're, they're digital. They're ready to go. Oh, yeah. For the change. Well, you don't have to worry about that. The government has rescued you once again. The change that was uh, scheduled to, to proceed on February 17th, that's out. You don't have to worry about it now. Um, the Congress and the President have decided to save us, us incompetent Americans who, who can't realize that, all right, if I have this television, if I went out and spent the money on this television, I guess I'm going to have to go buy that little digital converter. We're too out of control as a, as a society. We, 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 listen, let's just give out some bailout money. We'll be fine. But don't switch anything over to digital now. Let's say you got until June now. You got until June twelfth to manage your problem. And when we get to June twelfth, I'm going to make you a little wager. I'm going to make you a little bet. If if uh, the groups, organizations, there's going to be a, a political action committee f- formed just for the digital switch. Oh, I see it coming. <laughs> we cannot afford it. <laughs> We don't, we don't know what's going on. Uh, an analog TV lobbyist group. Yes, I see it coming. And, it, you know, I, I'm at a point now, where, and you can get discount uh, certificates from the government to, to go buy the boxes. If you're making it below a certain amount of money, uh, you can get a, 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 a coupon. Go get a coupon. Here you go. Because you're morons. Uh, they might as well just buy everybody plasma TVs. Exactly. Exactly. Because we've earned it, we deserve it, and there's been people working a lot harder than me, making more money, who should buy me stuff by proxy. Or at least, you know, jack it through the government first. Let the government jack them first. I'll sit at home and wait for the legislation to get passed. I'll sit at home and wait for the our lawmakers to uh, to pass this stuff. And i got to figure in a couple of months, I'm living fat. A couple of cars, some TVs, government cheese. I'm a big fan of the government cheese. I like that. I had a stand, as a cop, I had a stand outside of a center that was giving out government cheese. 1987, thereabouts. Isn't that stuff left over from World War II? God, I hope so. <laughs> 1987, I was literally in the middle of a riot with free cheese, people fighting over free cheese. 
God help us all. 1-866-775-7751. This is Radio for Wright County coming to you live from the bunkers of the Minnesota Majority. I am Dan Conry. We'll be right back. you got to keep them separated from our money, but we're not doing a very good job at that right now. This is the Dan Conry Show. 842 one Email here in studio. Show at danconry.com. That's show at danconry.com. Go to the website, danconry.com. You can uh, listen live. The lovely Dawn Igo, webmaster is posting the stories as we chat about them. So you can just click on uh, all those links, and they're good to go. You can read all this good stuff for today. Um, just to wrap up the digital TV uh, conversion for you folks out there, you, my my fellow victims who are incompetent and willing to spend money on a TV, but, oh, I can't get the converter. Democrats on Capitol Hill and the FCC have also questioned whether the government has provided enough on-the-ground support, help, assistance, handouts, uh, to consumers uh, ho- to hook up consu- converter boxes, or whether enough call center resources have been arranged to handle what could be an avalanche of requests for help. I'm sorry. If you have enough money to go buy a TV and you can plug it in, I guarantee you, you can put in this, this digital converter. Guarantee it. But we keep this is the, this is the new ethos of government. No, no, we got to give, got to give, got to give. Somebody's got to make the money, kids. Somebody's got to cre- generate that cash. And if you think the government is going to, well, we'll give it to the poor people and we'll, we'll make it ourselves. Don't, no, no. We'll, somebody else has got to make that cash. The people working, generating business, try, taking opportunity, giving other people jobs. But now they're going to do less of that while they're paying the, uh, the, the bills that the government are now arranging for you. This is the last paragraph. The uh, country is not prepared to undertake a nationwide transition in 12 days without unacceptably high consumer dislocation. Acting FCC Chairman Michael Kopp said in a statement, we've got a lot of work to do, but now we have an opportunity to do it better. The National Association of Broadcasters also welcomed the delay. The group said it will provide a new television spots to promote the June 12th deadline and work with stations to coordinate additional analog shutoff tests to raise awareness and help consumer prepare. Thank God they're there. Thank God. So when I tell you that the uh, the Gestapo... Is out there. There's been a lot of corporate bashing, a lot of CEO bashing taking place, a lot of folks who've been doing the wrong thing out there. Um, most of it deservedly so when you were dealing with corrupt CEOs, corrupt corporations. And uh, last I checked, uh, justice uh, uh, locked up a whole lot of people. Last I checked, anyway. And that was under the uh, Bush administration. A whole lot of people went to jail. A lot of corrupt uh, corporate America went to jail under uh, President Bush's watch. But uh, some rules that go along with this bailout money, and and my good friend Joe Metzler from uh, uh, Mortgages Unlimited, and uh, you can see his ad right on my website at dancowry.com, and I'll give you his number after uh, this story. Um, Our brains are on the same page today because I saw this. And again, you just think about the, the mentality. Think about what um, the rules that are going to go with uh, this corporate bailout. Obama will, uh, will not allow compensation above $500,000 for CEOs out there in corporate America. Unbelievable. Stunning. And, and nobody is frightened by that. I mean, are you not afraid? Of that type of mentality, whoa, 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 if you're going to take our bailout money, you're going to have some rules that go along with it. Do you understand this, comrade? The state is giving you money now. We will rescue you, but there will be rules. Welcome to America. That's the case with any agency anywhere that takes government money. German bank, uh, first law since World War II, rejects state aid. That's on the Drudge Report. Very wisely so. No, yeah, you can keep your money. <laughs> Thanks, but we don't need your help. I certainly don't want it. Absolutely not. And my good friend Joe Metzler, who you can call, by the way, if, you, if, if now's the time to buy a house. Now's the time to go out there and get a mortgage. I mean, they're giving them to you. Uh, 651-552-3681. It's Mortgage Unlimited. Uh, Joe Metzler. Uh, I dealt with him personally. This is a, a, a ringing endorsement on my part. Um, Dan, have you seen the latest Washington joke? Obama has issued a $500,000 cap on executives, executives of companies receiving TARP money. That sounds great. 
The small print is fabulous in Washington. You've got to keep your eye on this, kids. As people really get upset about executives being rewarded financially for failure, then having the failure subsidized by taxpayers. But as usual, read between the lines. The new rule comes with a big loophole. The compensation limits can be waived in most, case, in most cases if the shareholders think the executive should earn more. Gee, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? I love how these politicians proudly stand at the podium stating how they're going to save the world when it's just another joke perpetrated on the taxpaying public. Well said, Joe Metzler. Well said. And I'm at a point now. I mean, think about the people who are creating this legislation. Think about this. Think about uh, and Nancy Pelosi. Uh, uh, the mainstream media is having a wrestling match with her because she is such a shrill and she's so incompetent and she's so wildly stupid. And I, I think Dan McGrath may have an example of, of her stupidity. I don't know if we still have that available to play. And if we don't, don't worry about it. But this is, I, you, many will get mad at me for using bad words, but this is a stupid woman. This is an angry, uh, hateful shrill who needs to be dealt with, who needs to be uh, confronted. And if you want to hear some of her genius at work, and this is a comment, if it was said by anybody on the right, if it was said by anybody who is a conservative, if they made this statement, this would be all over the front page news. This would be all over the network news. This would be all over um, any other outlet that they have. And, Dan, if we have it, that would be great. And if you want to give us a call, by the way, it's one eight six six seven seven five seven seven five one. 775 7751 Email here in studio, it's uh, show at danconnery.com. And... Um, and if you want to send an email to me after the show, go right to danconnery.com. All the email addresses are available. And, and Dan, if you don't have that, don't worry about it. It's, uh, that's fine. It's, uh, we got a phone ringing. We'll pick that up. And, uh, it, it is just stunning, uh, the incompetence that is accepted by the media from the left, from the Democrats. Be very, very afraid. Minnesota is, and it's falling lockstep into this, uh, this philosophy, this mindset, this brainwashing. Let's go to, uh, um, Tom in St. Paul. Hey, Tom, good morning. Hey, all right, Tom, you're dead on arrival. Tom, you there? All right, no problem. We'll drop that. And, um, but at the end of the day, and I, I know Tom is going to make a lucid point, he'll call back in and we'll, we'll re rack him and, uh, we'll punch him up. Um, at the end of the day, there are people out there who are so angry with their own governments. Great story in the Star Tribune today. And they should be angry. <sighs> Maplewood man wants to uh, area to secede from the city. A Maplewood man said he's fed up with his city and wants to create a new one. Premier sign owner Jeff Wyckoff wants to break from the southern corner of the St. Paul suburb to create a new city called Innovation. I like that. Uh, Wyckoff says the seven square mile area includes technology company 3M and it's $5 million in taxes that, that it generates. He said that he could run a new city with a quarter of the workers and a contract police, fire, and other emergency service. He said that would be a good deal considering the property values have dropped and taxes have gone up in Maplewood. But other re residents laugh about the plan saying it's a little bit crazy. Mayor uh, Diana Longry says that she just wishes Wyckoff would focus on bettering all of Maplewood. Well, guess what? At one time, I lived in a borough other than Brooklyn in New York City. It was a borough called Staten Island. And the borough president was a guy by the name of Guy Molinari. And this was a time when the city was completely and totally out of control. This is a time when the city literally could not police its own streets, could not keep people safe, um, could not provide services, could not provide mass transit effectively, was, was just completely and totally out of control, could not spend money efficiently. And uh, we had more social services than, the eye could, uh, than you could blink at. We had more freebies than you could dream of in that city. We probably rivaled uh, San Francisco in a lot of that area. And Staten Island is a very interesting borough. It's a working class borough. It is a majority middle class. 
uh, with certain sections that are very, very well to do. It is a place where uh, if you work hard, you can live in a decent home. You live, you live a little bit too close to each other. That's one of my complaints about that place. Um, and people were dying. There was a homicide rate. I would say it, it was flirting with uh, um, over 2,500 homicides in, in 1987. I'll say that. I mean, people were literally talking about 3,000 homicides in the city. Um. No matter how you slice it, we could not deal with the city anymore. And at the time, David Dinkins was the mayor. Um, incompetence at unprecedented levels. And uh, just just frightening. But uh, let's go to the phones. one 775 7751 Hey, uh, Jerry in Buffalo, how you doing, my friend? Yeah, yeah I was just going to mention about the digital TV. You know, the reason they're putting it off isn't as much... People don't have their converter boxes, but uh, if you remember the Hugo Storm, um, they had very little warning before that tornado. An emergency alert system isn't up and running right. uh, quite as well on the digital TV signal either, because I got two TVs side by side, you know, doing my own test, one analog and one digital. Right. And last night they had the emergency alert system on, and it was on uh, analog, but wasn't on digital, so... That's not ready yet. Well, uh, that conversion once that conversion is, is set and in place, I mean that's the first thing uh, that they were working on, Jerry. And, and I, I get the fact that the, uh, TV is the, it is the main form of uh, information gathering for most Americans today. I understand that. I get that. Um, yeah. At the end of the day, if, if you you have two TVs, you said uh, you yeah. sound like a very very intelligent man. You sound like a very reasonable man. And I understand people who are in certain communities that got hit by. Uh, um, uh, get hit by weather certainly will be behind the eight ball. I understand that as well. Uh, we as fellow Americans are more than willing to help each other, and we we have forgotten that. We're waiting on the government uh, to give us some sort of handout and and delay everything and make everything cheaper for us. Uh, it, it, these are frightening times ahead, Jerry. And uh, uh, you sound like a man who's certainly bright enough to make sure that digital box is purchased. Um, you're plugged in. You're informed. And I have total faith in you. I don't think the government uh, has to help you out in any way, shape, or form because I think you can get the job done, pal. Yeah, but you know, until they, you know, it's like a newspaper carrier throwing the paper on the neighbor's lawn and expecting you to move your box around to uh, adjust uh, for them, you know, and instead they're not. There's many times I don't get the signal at all out here. The train uh, comes past, the signal's gone. Well, I, uh, Jerry? But the Hugo Storm. Uh, you know, that emergency alert, they had very little warning there. If that warning would have happened uh, during that uh, little uh, glitch with the digital TV, they wouldn't have got the warning. There would have been more deaths in that situation. Uh, a reasonable uh, response, but I, I think this uh, is a subject. That, I think that's a separate issue in and of itself. Uh, let's go to uh, Tom on line four. Hey, Tom, good morning. How you doing? Dan, I'm doing fine. Uh, this this CEO pay cap thing kind of got me thinking. It it almost seems like the Obama administration is doing one of two things. They're either learning to legislate as they go, right, or they're telling their base what they want to hear, but governing in a different way. And I think either scenario is sort of untenable. I mean, as you just mentioned, I think folks reading the headlines that support Obama will say, hey, $500,000 pay cap, that's great, and move on with their lives. But as you just pointed out, there are loopholes. You know, that doesn't sound like change to me. And it, it tells me that regardless of what Obama says to his base, he realizes the top CEO talent is going to have to earn more. And I'm also thinking back to the, uh, the Buy American clause that he threw out there and yeah. how, you know, weren't we told that the new Treasury Secretary uh, is an expert on the Depression, yet it was protectionism that exacerbated the Depression. Exactly. And, of course, the Obama team had to pull back on that because they realized after they blurted it out, well, maybe that's what people wanted to hear, but it's just not doable. Well, yeah, you, you, I don't know. You've created, several, you've created several different questions in my mind right now. Uh, the very media that was uh, 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 singing and applauding this, you know, I was at a grocery store yesterday. You, you guys are going to love this. I was at a grocery store yesterday in the cities that uh, had a, a, a it was a beautiful table with a, a beautiful green cloth on top of it and on top were, were every magazine that had Obama on the cover whether it be People or Time or 
had its own separate, beautifully designed table, uh, on, and the, each copy was on a beautiful stand. Um, obviously, big fans of Obama in this grocery store. Uh, secondly, you think about the lack of critical analysis on the part of the media who were uh, celebrating and applauding all the appointments uh, by Mr. Obama. Uh, at the end of the day, they are incompetent. They don't know what they're doing. Uh, there are mistakes upon mistakes upon mistakes, uh, philosophies that are not only self-destructive, but destructive overall to the American people. And uh, they're seeing the incompetence in such a way now, even the media is starting to back off, if you haven't noticed. Uh, some critical analysis is starting to generate, and this guy's not a month in. Uh, what's that? It tells you a whole lot coming in our direction, uh, Tom. I was very surprised, quite frankly, Dan, to see a headline in the Star Tribune, a uh, 20 point type that said, I screwed up, yep. says President yep. Obama. But, you know, I had a theory on I that. I think you're right. I, I think we are going to see a sea change of sorts. But what scares me the most, Dan, is that I, I still fear that we're going to go pretty far down and that there's a pretty sizable portion of the population that's perfectly fine having a figurehead at the helm. Right. While we crash and burn. That's yeah. what scares me. And if we get below a certain point, it's going to be a long time before we get back, Tom. Thanks. Great call as usual. Uh, that's Tom the Blog Bunnett. Go to danconnery.com. You can read his blogs every day. Just fabulous writing. I enjoy the heck out of it. 1 775 7751. This is Radio for Wright County, AM 1360, KRWC.